This lesson is on piece number five out of my series called Seven Easy Classical Guitar Songs for Beginners. This series is an introduction to classical guitar by teaching actual pieces of music, very simple beginner level pieces, and by giving you step-by-step -step exercises for how to work on them from the ground up. To get the most out of this, I encourage you to start from part one. There's a link in the description to a playlist of the whole series. Each piece in this series features a different technique, training, and element of expression needed to bring the music alive, which you can then apply to any other piece of music. I'll also do a harmonic analysis of every piece in this series. If you're wanting an introduction to classical guitar with some easy, playable, and enjoyable pieces to walk away with, then you're in the right place. You can download the sheet music and classical guitar tabs for all the pieces in this series for free. They're inside my solo guitar arrangement pack. Just click on the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com slash moon to get my arrangement pack for free. In this lesson, I'll teach you the fifth piece out of seven in this series, and we will talk about how to take advantage of timbre, one of my favorite things to play with, to be more expressive. Let's get into it. I'll give you a little outline here of what we're going to cover. First, I'm going to perform the piece in its entirety so you can hear the whole thing. Then we'll look at the sheet music and point out a couple things. After that, we will do our exercises. I have eight of them for this piece that we're going to work step by step ways to work on this from the ground up. And you can apply this to any piece. It's just ways to create baby steps instead of diving in and working on a piece of music and getting discouraged. If we can learn how to break things down for ourselves, anything is possible. It's my favorite thing to do when practicing. So I'll share that with you here. After that, we'll talk about our element of expression for this video, which is timbre. We're going to talk about something called ponticello and also dolce, with different ways to attack the strings to make them sound uh, very different. And this is extremely effective for being emotionally expressive. After that, I'll give you a bonus tip on how to listen to multiple parts uh, while playing classical guitar. Then we'll do a harmonic analysis. And at the very end, I'll do a demonstration once again at a very slow tempo intended for you to practice along with so you can work towards that for yourself. Remember to get the sheet music uh, with the link in the top of the description if you want to follow along. This piece is Andantino by Matteo Carcassi from the late classical and early romantic era. And here we go with a little demonstration performance of the piece. As far as the sheet music goes, there's nothing new to point out that hasn't been in past pieces. It's always nice to just take a look at the stem directions to really take note of what voices are separate. We have an accompaniment voice, which is like the bass line and accompaniment. I would think of these as together as one part, you know, one instrument, one band member, if you will, and then the top voice. And the only time a third or middle part comes in is this chord at the very end here. The only other thing to point out is just that there's a mistakenly a repeat sign here that will be fixed in the downloadable version. So when you download it, that will not be there. This repeat should be here. So when you play from here, you go all the way to the end and then repeat back to here. This is the B section. So that's everything I wanted to say about the sheet music. Let's move on to our exercises. Exercise number one is to play the A section. That's the, from the beginning to the repeat sign here without this middle note, which is the open third string. The G is played as a pedal tone, which we've talked about earlier in the series, a drone note that's just happening in between all those other intervals. Let's play it without that middle note. And we're kind of breaking things apart, deconstructing it, and then we'll piece it back together later, then we'll know it so much better. Okay, make sure you can do that three times in a row in a way you're very happy with before moving on. Exercise number two is to do the same thing in the B section. So you'd start here and you'd go all the way to here. You could also just do it from here to here because this is repeating from the first. Uh, this is the A section again at the end. So from here to here at least, which will sound like this. So I just played the top parts. 
ignoring this drone note, this switches to D down here, which we're still just thinking as kind of that pedal point that it's bouncing off of. So that is exercise number two. Exercise number three is to piece those together and you wanna do the whole thing without those pedal point notes. So I won't do the whole thing, but I'll show you just moving on between them. And then I'll move on. continue to the end and any way you get creative with breaking things apart for yourself that's a huge takeaway that I hope you would get from this whole series you don't have to do exactly what I'm telling you do it if in doubt and do it because it's good for your musicianship but you can also say oh, I'm having trouble with one aspect of it what if I do the opposite what if my time is the trouble what if I'm having trouble placing these drone notes in time well maybe I should play with a metronome and not play the other parts and only play these on the off beats whatever solution or problem solving or getting creative with what you need that's really always going to be the best practice but if in doubt breaking things apart like what i'm showing you in any of these pieces in this series is very valuable exercise number four is going to be the right hand only we're going to add in this drone note but we're going to do just the right hand and we're going to do all the patterns that come up in the music so there's four of them so i think it's great to do one measure each and I'll just spell it out for you here with the strings and you'll you'll get the hang of it. So strings four and two, strings D and B with the G in between. The next string set to do is strings five and one or strings A and E, so G still in between. The next one is four and one, so strings D and E with the G in between. And the last one is strings E and B six and two see what I'm doing there so I'm taking just the open strings of oh, okay this is str strings four and two and then you got to switch to get the right hand moving to strings five and one it's hard to see from the music that's why it's better that I just spell it out for you here like this once you get each of those down then try to do a measure of each of them so one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four I'll do it again missed the D there on the first one but I would sit with this for a while and get comfortable with it sink into it relax into it get the tone feeling good the right hand or plucking hand by itself is such a huge amount of work it deserves a lot of attention because it's where the tone and the expression come from. So without this feeling secure and nice and smooth and how you want it to sound, it's not going to feel good once you add the fretting hand in with things. So that's exercise four. Exercise five is to do one measure each of the B section. So that was just the A section. We're going to do the right hand only of the B section. So this is pretty straightforward. We're going to do the E and B string and then the G in between. Get comfortable with that and then the E and B and the D in between pretty straightforward right but we need to get that feeling good and then one measure each once you get used to it depending on the shape of your nails or the length of your nails or not playing with nails or playing with finger picks or playing different type of guitar, which is all fine to do. Um, and different based on different days, you might need to really sit with that. My thumbnail is sadly almost non-existent. So it's really tricky right now. That is not ideal at all. I'm feeling extremely secure with the rest of my nails and getting a sound I really like, but this kind of rattle that you're hearing every once in a while, this little scrape is coming from how exactly precise I have to be with the thumbnail um, and I'm getting a good tone sometimes but the uh, the lack of nail there is causing some of that insecurity so that's why based on the condition of my nails I would have to sit with it for quite a while to uh, really get comfortable with it exercise number six is just the a section as written so now we're doing kind of a typical practice approach where you just take a portion at a time You say say oh not happy with that which i wasn't so i'll do it again do it again do it again try to get it several times in a row exercise number seven is the b section by itself so starting here 
Okay, starting right there. And then of course you piece it all together and you try to get the whole thing. So easier said than done, but hopefully each little moment that you work on, and I'm kind of skating through it because I'm just teaching the overview of it. But when you, where you need to be is where you will sit for a while. It's, the point is not to rush through it. The point is not to check it off. The point is to find the moment that is exactly where you are at that gets you the conditioning that you need. So as soon as you find something, if it's this and the right hand's not feeling great, awesome, there you have an hour of practice. There you have your next few days of practice, you know, with maybe adding just, uh, just this part even or any of those, sink into it, enjoy it, and let it come together slowly and organically, and that's where the musical expression is gonna eventually come to be. Speaking of expression, let's do our element of expression for this video, which is timbre, and you heard me doing it, and I'll do it quite often, especially when things are repeating. Timbre being the quality of the sound. It's not exactly tone, but it is more like the texture of the sound. So, and it's not pitch either. So we're gonna do something called dolce, which is playing extremely warm. And that is when you play over here, almost right up near the fretboard. Okay, so. Playing there as warm as possible, as rich as possible, has a more kind of a deeper sound. That's dolce. Same exact strings and notes and everything, but playing over here near the bridge is called ponticello. This brighter, kind of thinner sound, kind of pointy sound. So the contrast between those two and everything in between is a massive asset for adding color and expression to your playing. So if in doubt, experiment with it on repeats. So here's what I did in the beginning. All dolce. Well, it's repeating now. Ah. Doesn't it kind of resemble an orchestra, right? There's one group of instrumentation plays something from the theme and then something echoes it, right? Something brighter, something in a different register or range or timbre and all these colors that can be used in an orchestra. It's like playing with our, being our own conductor. So that's Dolce and Ponticello. And in this piece, I would just do Dolce at the beginning to practice and then Ponticello on the repeat and just do that for both sections and you'll hear me doing that in uh, other pieces as well There's another one coming up in this series where I it's also kind of just asking for that So I do that quite a bit so really enjoyable so play around with that if you need to just sit with open strings and then practice moving That's great Okay, or pause and then the chord pretty cool right that's it's very rewarding very satisfying to get that range of color in our sound and it and I played without my nails for five years and uh, it's still very possible to get that it's not quite as bright here, but that's okay. You still can get, absolutely, you have to dig in, use a little more effort. I did it quite a bit without my nails, uh, but you'll get a very warm sound here, and then you just have to put a little more effort in here, and you'll still get a bright sound, just not quite as bright as the nails. Uh, let's move on to our bonus tip. Bonus tip for this lesson is just encouraging you to listen to multiple parts as you play. Don't forget to spend some time listening. Perhaps you already are, and you're thinking, why would someone not listen to it? But it's so common that we forget to listen we might be hearing it, but that's very different than listening in a deep way or listening to what's in there that I'm not noticing yet because we have to focus on so many things, our coordination, right hand, left hand, everything. And so with this piece, I'll just encourage you to make sure you're hearing this in there. Listen for that. Were you hearing that before? Right? It's and even better in your own playing because it's kind of vibrating through you. So I'm 
listening to picking out the bottom voice and then I'll go back and listen to the top one and then kind of try to take it all in at once and just a little bit of time especially teasing out the the different voices and parts so we don't just hear it as one blob of sound so we're really hearing it as having the depth texture that it is intended to have so that's just some encouragement there to uh, take some time to listen and make sure you're, if you're not hearing things that you know are there but you're not quite hearing it great that's when you stumbled on the gold mine of finding a weakness for yourself that you can continue continue to work on it can it will open up and pop out at you if you're like i know i'm playing this but i can't hear it that's that can be a difficult thing to discover but just know it's possible to hear it and now you can put the effort into trying to listen to it and let that come into your skill set over time Let's do a harmonic analysis here. This is a really fun one to analyze. We have just a C chord here for this first partial measure. And then this is a G7 chord. So this is the one chord in the key of C, the five dominant seventh chord, this whole measure, G7. Okay, then it goes back to C major again. This is all C major. So one chord, five chord, one chord. And then it goes back to the five chord again. So, so much classical music, classic melodies, simple songs, uh, famous pieces of music are so much of them are just one and five or just simple chords you know c in the key of c and g in the key of c the one and the five chords so one five one five one c g7 c g7 c here's where it gets interesting this is c major right here again c and c and then here we would think of that as g7 again because it's been doing one five one five one five one five but then it goes to this here and this is like an a7 chord a dominant seven which is not in the key of c and we know it's not in the key of c because that accidental is there that sharp symbol means oh this is not in the normal key uh that's taking it outside of the key that a7 is pointing to d minor this is called a secondary dominant and it's called a chromatic chord and i'll link to a video that i did on chromatic chords all about the theory of them if you want to check that out there's a link in the description so i would think of this as going to d minor and then the five of d minor so d minor a7 d minor again so it's doing like a one five one from the d minor this could also be g7 and then surprise this weird sound a7 and then that sounds like d minor and now it goes to d7 and yes there's a g in there so people say wait g is not in d minor that's okay this is a pedal point pedal point can be dissonant a pedal note this drone thing it can it cannot necessarily be lining up with the intending harmony so this is open to interpretation in some sense and kind of giving us surprise sounds that leads us to this very much d7 sound this is d dominant seven that's not in the key this is the five of five so what's happening here you don't have to understand any of this if you're not interested in it that's okay i just want to share anyway What's happening here is we have modulated to the key of G. So we right here go five, one, five, one in G, D7, G major, D7, G major. And this is very common in classical music for uh, after the main theme of a piece, later in the piece, it will modulate specifically to the five key. So we have modulated to the five of the original key, which is G major. And then we just go back because we land on the five as this key sound now. Now it sounds for this moment like we're in the key of G, but now that's serving as overall the five of the piece and five to one is this resolution relationship in composition. So we're sitting on G and that leads very nicely into C and we're just back in C major for our normal theme. If any of that confused you, just let it go over your head. If it goes over your head, that's okay. Just exposure to things, just exposure to things. If you are exposed, if you do know some theory and have heard of some of those concepts i hope that can fill you in always really helpful especially if we come from a background of knowing chord symbols and chord shapes and we see them above songs and we're playing songs i just uh for myself benefit so much from taking a very close look at what the actual harmony is it's usually simpler than we think because what makes it sound complex and rich and classical is the uh really intentional multiple voices and voice leading and um the precise design of it but it's not necessarily crazy chord progressions so again we have c and then we could say g7 a7 d minor d7 g d7 g modulated to that key 
and then back to C major, and then same thing as above. So that is our harmonic analysis. Next, I will do a slow demonstration meant for you to play along with. So this is really great to work towards something specific. So if you want to work towards being able to play along with me in the video, then that's a great project to do if you happen to like this piece. Remember, you can get the sheet music for this lesson and all the lessons in this series and a bunch of other pieces of music with my solo guitar arrangement pack. Some of them are quite difficult. Some of them are much easier, but you can get them all for free with the link in the top of the description or go to soundguitarlessons.com moon. Now here is my slow demonstration for you to practice along with. Even though this is half a measure here, technically a pickup measure, I'm going to count one, two, three, four, just because that's an easier count in to come in. And we will come in together here after I count in four. Let's do it. One, two, three, four. That's it for this lesson. Thanks so much for watching. I post a new lesson video every week. Hope to see you in another lesson soon, and I hope to see you in more of the videos in this series. Take care, and happy practicing.